Well, without further ado, this is the Fourth Society. Thank you for joining me, man. Uh, introduce yourself, the title you go by, uh, your background, where are you from, and we'll start with that. Yeah, first of all, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, I, my name is Thiago Pereira. Uh, I'm a young artist from Brazil. I make collages, uh, handmade collages, but I mix it with digital art sometimes. Cool, cool, sick. And dude, yeah, I just want to say from the start, your collages, uh, they stand out on their own. They are sick. I like your vision. I like your style. What kind of got you into collage work, would you say? Thanks so much, bro. Uh, actually, my girlfriend got me into collages. No way, <laughs> uh, that's sick. For real. She's a sick she's the best college i've ever seen in my life so what? i think okay. my work i think my work is just a, a reflection from what she, she does but at first we make we made collages together but later on i i started making digital art on it so we kind of went different ways you know art but she's a She's my inspiration for real. <laughs> Dude, that's beautiful. I was not expecting that. That's always awesome when something like that happens. Does she make NFTs, if anything, or does she kind of just stick to her own private work? No, just for fun. I mean, uh, we make it one weekend. So I mean, we see each other, but most for fun. Interesting. That, that honestly is beautiful. Okay, well, going from there... How long would you say you've kind of been into, you know, creativity? Were you into creating things as a young kid or did you get into it more so later on in, uh, later on in life? I think my whole life I've been into art because since as, I was a kid, uh, I liked painting. I mean, I'm very bad at, at painting, but <laughs> I always like it to draw things and try to say something without really saying the words, you know? And then I got into music. Uh, I'm a musician too, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think my whole life it's been around art. And I think I found something in college that really make me feel good about it, you know? I mean, I feel like I can really tell people what I'm thinking because in music, I, I, I was, okay but you know i never felt like it's me doing this like people can see that what i do hmm. and now with collages i feel so it's so good and fun no i i can see that i would say you know with collages you found your real calling you know and uh when i first came across your work uh that specific 1968 piece i don't know it just stuck out to me and it still sticks out to me and I mean, your other work does as well, especially that the most newest one you released where you kind of have uh, anim animations to it and so forth. That one's powerful. Yeah, thanks, bro. I mean, the first one, I fucking love it because it's so vintage and simple, but powerful at the same time. And my last one, Identity Crisis, I tried really hard to get out of my comfort zone and try to bring new things like uh, mess with things a little more with new new medias and i think it's fun and then i'm cooking a new piece right now going like identity crisis i'm animating some things and let's see how it, how it goes <laughs> definitely yeah well i mean i'm sure it's going to turn out sick if anything, what process do you use? Like uh, what tools do you mainly use to create your collages with? And also what's your favorite magazine to pull from or maybe a magazine nobody even knows about that you kind of specifically like? And I mean, uh, or you know, regardless whether people know about it or not, what would be your favorite? I usually use um, old school books. Like when I, I was in high school, I, I had a lot of books like, geometry history and actually history is my favorite because it has a lot of textures a lot of context different contexts a lot of of different images that you, real images like from the real world and I, I think history books is my favorite but uh, 
I use like everything, math books, Portuguese books, like Portuguese have beautiful poems where I can, I mean, th there are some magazines that I don't even cut anything, but just reading, I get inspired. So that's cool. Some ways you do, don't even like to cut a piece of paper to make a collage, just a poem that you read and you see some textures there. I think that's no. it. <laughs> oh yeah, no, definitely. I would say that now that you bring it up, when you mention like math books and history books, I see that now uh, in your pieces. And I think that's one of the things that maybe stuck out to me uh, about the pieces, not to say other artists don't do that, but I did see that primarily in your work, um, like say uh, the identity crisis, kind of using like that classical work in the background. I thought that was really cool. But I also like what you said, you like to use the history books because you're like cutting out pieces from like reality. Yes. That's cool. I like how you uh, thought about it in that sense. With art, though, uh, two questions, really. Why do you yourself, or you kind of already answered it, but what do you hope to gain as your greatest goal in art? You know, I know you hope to express yourself, but is there any specific main goals that you hope to achieve, like a kind of certain artwork or, you know, whether it be financial gain or whatever kind of you're thinking of as of currently? And what do you think is the meaning of art? Why do you think humans create art? I think most of it is to connect with people. I mean, I never dream of a guy coming to me like, hey, I want to interview you in push. Like, and now in the NFT space, I, I think it's more, not easy, but it's more affordable to connect with people from around the world. I mean, we had the NFT New York City, which uh, I want to go next year. And there's a lot of things going on right now. And it's really interesting to see how different people it's here. So I think my main goal is connect with everyone and meet different things. I, I, I think it's the most awarding thing to get. That's beautiful. And then from there, what did you, what, or why do you think humans make art, would you say, or what is the meaning? Uh, some people have like, a, you know, they like to think into it deep and I'm one of those people, you know, why, you know, what's the purpose of it? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but if anything, what do you think is the purpose of art? I mean, there's things that you can't speak. So people always search different ways to, to show themselves to people, to, show what they're thinking but sometimes you can't just say things so i think art is just a form of communication self-expressions no i love that it, i think uh it is in some way a deep form of communication and like almost sub uh, i don't know like subconscious communication sometimes as well it seems like mm -hmm. but what would you say is your favorite piece out of the pieces you've made one of my favorites from my favorite from my work yeah, which one do you think is like, okay, this one is my absolute favorite, if you have one? Uh, I mean, right now is Identity Crisis because um, personally, it already feels special because I made it in a really comfort uh, day. Like, it was a good day when I was making, I was having so much fun making it. And... Uh, I think it, it spread out a little. I got into a, a community gallery by Delton. So it made me so much happy. And I think it's my favorite because of it. Because of it. I mean, it got more people. It made more, more noise, you know? Definitely. No, yeah, it, it made more noise for sure. And it's interesting that you say you were happy while making it. It, it seems like a dark piece. You know, so you almost would assume that you had to be in like a dark mindset or a dark state because some artists are like that, you know? Yeah, the fun part of it, it, uh, it has a dark meaning because I'm, I'm not going to say that I, I was going through, but I'm still going through some, some personal frustrations that I was trying to deal in. So identity crisis was the first piece that I got to, uh, 
how can I say this, Disconstru disconstruct myself and grab the little pieces and then going to make something. But the happy, part, the happy part about this piece is that the accomplishments, but the, the piece is really, really dark. Gotcha. Okay. So th that makes sense. So it's like you, you recognized in yourself, you achieved something, you, you hadn't yet, and the, the ending result is beautiful, and it truly is beautiful. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. For... Yeah, anytime. Going from there, I know you said that your girlfriend really is one of your main inspirations and kind of got you into collages, but are there any other artists, whether they be old uh, or just in the collage space or, you know, artists in general, painters, drawers that inspire you and influence your kind of style? I mean, from a little bit older, uh, I would like to say Basquiat. I mean, he's the greatest. He inspired a lot of people, a lot of young artists like me. He has a, a beautiful collection, so... I mean, Basquiat is a great inspiration. And uh, recent artists, I mean, in, in, in the FT space, I mean, uh, Jake the Dejean. Jake is, uh, this man changed my life. I'll talk about uh, a little bit further, but for now, Jake Etienne is a Brazilian artist. He's he is the one who got me into NFTs, but not in the direct way. I was following him for a couple of years before NFT. So he was the first person that I saw minting his pieces and making some noise, taking birds then our country to this space. So it's in is a, a great inspiration for me. And Kelvin, you know Kelvin for sure. Dude, he's, he is sick. Bro, I love this guy. He helped me a lot like he gave me so many inspiration to keep going keep making art and he definitely is, is one of the reasons for why i'm still here so and most of the brazilian artists i mean they are all great so yeah just uh, my guys cool cool no dude when i kind of you know i would i in all honesty your collage work uh, was really the first kind of collage work I had come across looking into it a little bit more I came across you know more Brazilian artists and just collage artists in general on Tezos and I was like whoa there's so much talent out there this is kind of crazy I didn't even know this was going on yeah I mean I think as a third world country we, we just needed some some opportunities to show ourselves you know I mean there are our community is so large and it has so many great writers and it's cool to see now that we are reaching more people. No, definitely. And that's cool how you look at it uh, in that way and how uh, you're kind of referencing that, you know, you guys just needed a, a global platform and a global way to, you know, show yourselves and express yourselves. And now you guys are. And I mean, it's I'm just mind blown by uh, how much talent is out there and just unknown talent. But you kind of touched on it in regards to the NFTs. Can you go into a little bit more exactly how did you really find yourself uh, in the NFT space? What was the steps that, you know, brought you to really wanting to mint your first piece and deciding that this was the path you were going to take? I mean, I think it was February 2021. I mean, more than a year ago. I already knew that the NFT space is existed. I was seeing like Etienne and a bunch of other people meeting the, the, the art. And I thought, I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I was engaging with people and uh, I would search it for a long time to see if it really was what I wanted to do. But after a few weeks, I it got to my head like, I'm gonna do it. Why not? I mean, there's so many people here doing so many things. I thought that it would be fun, and it is being so much fun. So, you know, going back to how you kind of mentioned NFTs connecting people, I've really never seen this kind of artistic connectivity 
uh, throughout the internet until, I mean, I know artists were always on Twitter and even Instagram and they were showcasing their work, but I've never really seen something like this happen. Have you seen anything like this or is this kind of like new for you guys as well? For me, it's very, very new. And like you said, people was showcasing their art, but I never got to be a part of something, you know, I, I never got to be around so many people doing so doing so many different things and everyone interacting like they are friends but <laughs> we just met in internet but True. i don't know i think this this community has something that bring everyone together like everyone is happy to see people winning and I, I think that's the most beautiful thing ever. No, dude, I completely agree with you. I, I'm just, you know, uh, previously I was more into crypto, you know, just like the cryptocurrencies or the digital assets. But, you know, NFTs were always in the backdrop of my mind. And then when I started seeing more artists hit the scene, I was like, wow. And then I've just been paying attention to uh, the community develop. And that's what really made me start to want to do this is just there were so many interesting people connecting and, you know, relationships forming. And uh, I just was like, wow, this is this is really beautiful, man. Uh, I felt like, you know, this is a historical moment, to say the least. And a lot of the artists that are, you know, early to this as you guys are, because I know a lot of people like to say, like, we're late or we don't really know where we're at, but we're for sure still early. And uh, it's going to be beautiful to see how this continues to develop. And I can't wait to see you at NYC NFT next year. And hopefully, you know, Lord willing, I get to go. For sure. We meet there. Yeah, dude. Let's, would, let's go. I would love to meet you there. hundred percent. Going from there, though, uh, I know most of your pieces are on OpenSea. Have you used any other blockchains besides uh, Ethereum? So first piece I ever mentioned was... Uh, have you have you room in your heart first, which is my first collage that I, I minted, and it was on foundation on Ethereum block, blockchain, and I spent like months shilling, sharing this piece, and I never get sold it until today, and it's okay for me too because I'm not here like for cash grab or the money, so. I'm still happy with the piece and how it, it's going. So, but a few months later, Jake Dejean got into my DMs and he said, like, bro, you art sick. I, I like your art, but it's on a shared contract. Like, so he helped me to get my manifold contract. So I got to bring all my pieces that was on shared contracts to my own contract. So it has its own value, you know, and now it's on my own contract. So before I did that, I got some pieces on Polygon, but while as a sharing, I see that some collectors don't see that Polygon is very cool, so <laughs> no, that's why I, I, re, I removed all of them, burned them, then remitting all my own contract. Interesting. Uh, you mentioned, and I haven't heard an artist mention this just yet, but that you were at first minting with a shared contract, and then the uh, other man you had mentioned, he helped you to mint your NFTs on your own contract. Uh, can you explain that a little bit more? Because I didn't know, well, I mean, it makes sense that if you're minting on a, on a platform, like say OpenSea or something, it's like a shared contract to a degree, but how do you mint it on your own contract? What do you have to do to do that? I mean, I was really, really broke at the time. So that's why I think I say that Jake really got me going into this space. He, he introduced me to Manifold, which is a, a studio that you can, in a easy way, make your own contracts like, and the fees that are really, really low. So, but I, I'm Brazilian. So dollar here is really expensive to buy Ethereum to make things. So I was broke and he, nah, bro, I got you. Take some Ethereum and mint your pieces into your contract. Like, let them make their, their own value, you know? Wow. 
yeah, that changed my whole life. And that's why I think this community is beautiful. Like, and that's most of it. I mean, I share a contract sometimes, especially in open sea, you get too lost on things. Like there's so many things and it's, it's special for you to, to have your pieces on your own thing and then sharing there so people can see it, you know. And, you know, it's beautiful to know that such things are going on behind the scenes that, you know, artists are reaching out to other, other artists and saying like, hey, dude, I, I can see, you know, personally, your work is standing out to me. I want to make sure you're doing it right. I want to make sure you're minting these things correctly for your uh, 100% benefit and for you to kind of continue to maintain yourself as an artist going forwards and even willing to put up some money to get you to that place. That's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like it was so genuine and like I was expecting this at all. I mean, I even told you, no, bro, you don't have to do this. Like, let me mint some pieces on thesis, then then you collect, then I create my own contract. But he was like, no, it's okay. Like, uh, create them and make it right, you know. That's, sure. I'm so grateful for, for this moment. It was some of highlights of what I've been doing to now. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you were able to share that because that's, uh, that's something I haven't yet heard just yet talking with the other artists that I have interacted with. Yeah, there's so much help going on off screen. Like, you don't need to be with money. Like, sometimes just people support is supporting you with good kind words you know i mean mm. i said earlier that kelvin helped me i mean he was one of the first person that said bro you are to sick like you should definitely do this and i i was like all right let's do it then <laughs> that is awesome and i'm glad he inspired you to do it because uh you know it's uh, it's wonderful to have come upon it myself Continuing from there, though, I have a couple random questions and then we'll go back to or we'll see how much time we have and then we'll go back to more serious questions. But these are like fun questions uh, to kind of conversate a little bit. But if you uh, are off the top of the head, what did you have for breakfast uh, this morning? If you did eat breakfast, I usually don't. I had bread with uh, peanut butter and like some eggs and uh, orange juice. Hey, okay. Very healthy. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a killer breakfast on the low. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm, a, I'm on diet to get some, some weight, you know? <laughs> no, yeah, dude. I mean, at the end of the day, the greatest asset anybody can have besides art, their talent, uh, and money is their health, you know? So it's always good to take care of yourself. From there, would you rather have a dog or a cat? A dog. I have a dog, actually. What dog do you have? Uh, I don't know. I mean... Shih Tzu, it's, <laughs> it's a real name for you. I mean, no, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a breed, 100%. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, <laughs> if you had to visit the sun or the moon, which would you visit? I think the moon. It sounds uh, more intriguing, you know. I want to also continue with, uh, say, uh, celestial objects. If you had to visit any planet in the solar system, like between Jupiter or Mars or whatever, which one would you visit? Saturn, Saturn for sure oh. so beautiful <laughs> no dude I completely agree with you Saturn Saturn might be the top one uh, on the list for me as well just the, the rings uh the size of it just sick continuing what's your favorite food mm. or like meal pasta I love pasta dang dude pasta I, me I'd have to say my favorite pasta is like fettuccine alfredo it's kind of basic but I don't think it gets any better than fettuccine alfredo what about you I mean, I don't know the, how it how it from it's made over there, but let me see. It's like like a yellow Bo Bolognese. It's how it, it, it sounds Bolognese. Bolognese. That I don't know. That's how they. That's how we say it here. I guess just fettuccine. And I might be saying it wrong. <laughs> that red one. Uh, it's cool. All right, from there, what's your favorite movie? Um, that's a tricky one. I mean, it's hard to say one favorite movie, but I like 
I like to say a very simple movie. I don't think a lot of people have this movie as their favorite, but Guava Island by Donald Glover featuring Rihanna. I mean, that movie is so beautiful. And uh, I think it's one of my favorites, even though it's a pretty simple movie. Interesting. I, I haven't heard of that movie. You'll have to send me like a link for it because I really like movies. I'm kind of a movie guy, to say the least. So if I can come across just a beautiful looking movie, I'd love to watch it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, the whole scene is beautiful and he's an artist and he's struggling and he lives in a in an island, like the title says. And I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Gotcha. Should yeah, definitely yeah. Check, check it out later. Okay, that's a bet. Yeah. What is it? Send me a link if you can, or like a picture of the of the film, so that way I can look it up. But what's your favorite yeah. music album? I'm kind of into slow curve these days. I mean, it's kind of a more uh, depressing. <laughs> I, I don't like to say depressing music, but it's more slow. It's more deep. So I'm into House Jumper of Love, which have this album self-titled and bro they are sick like guitars very heavy and noisy and grainy guitars makes my my soul interesting so you like some heavy metal not heavy metal like like um it's like uh, dirty i mean the guitars are dirty but the sound are very slow you know Okay, you'll have to you'll have to send me a link, a hundred percent. I'm always I'll curious. I'll definitely send you uh, the album later. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm always curious sometimes when like some of the interviewers mention a a, a movie or an album I haven't heard, just to like actually hear it. So then I'm like, okay, this is what they're listening to. Cool. Yeah, but I'm I'm very eclectic guy. I mean, I like uh, house. I like jazz. I like Brazilian music. I mean, it's great, bossa nova. You know. I list in everything, but these days I'm more into slow car. Gotcha. I, I'm like that as well. I listen to pretty much everything except country music. I don't, I just, I can't do country music. Um, it's kind of hard to listen. <laughs> dude, yeah. Even though I live in Texas, that's where I'm uh, at right now, at Amarillo, Texas, specifically in America. But there's just something about it. The, it, it just doesn't sound right. But continuing, uh, out of curiosity, what do you think is the greatest art piece ever made? Not of, say, like your own, and maybe you think it's your own, but what do you think to you is like, that's the, the Mona Lisa? It, that's the best thing I've seen so far. Very tricky one. I mean, I love Wario by Basket. I just want to, on a side note, he is amazing. He, he's beautiful. He's the goat. Like, no, for real. There's no one out there like, like him out there. And yeah, I think Wario from one of his paintings, I mean, the composition and the colors just make me stare like for hours and just appreciate the little things like out the textures and the details that he makes is just amazing. Interesting. No, I, I completely agree. Continuing from there, uh, I know you said you were working on another piece, but say collections, are you working on next to a degree? Are you working on just one of ones or do you plan to do like, you know, additions? What are you thinking? So for now, I have two collections, like they are both one of ones. My Genesis one is manual collages, but uh, it's just my handmade collages. And they are my first one on ones, and I'm I'm working right now on Before God Made Everything Worse, which is my second my second collection, where I, we have identity crisis. It was the first, and the next one it, it will be on this contract too. And I think for now I'll just stick to one on ones. I mean, I still have to reach more people to to previous know who I am so I think but I I definitely want to make additions later like this one that I'm making I I was thinking about going to editions but I don't want to create a new contract right now I want to finish things before I start new things and I think my but there will be definitely editions coming in the future cool cool I look forward to it man honestly 
I, you know, I, regardless though, I love one of one pieces, you know, uh, I think one of one pieces are sometimes uh, underrated. And I think over time, they're naturally going to be the standouts uh, of uh, say like the, the future of NFTs to some degree. I think one ones will be just uh, completing what you said before. One ones, I think it's actually the, the, the base to everything. I mean, like these profile pictures, collections are cool. Everything is very cool. But at the end of the day, the one-on-ones, it's what actually you change lives, you know. We can already see people that only make one-on-ones, make huge things, accomplish it, like so many things and it's so inspiring to see what the power of the one ones even though it takes more time to to get there you know but one ones for me are crazy i honestly i couldn't agree with you more uh you know a hundred percent the profile pics they're cool I, i do see some things that i i can see that okay this person is trying to make artistic profile pics and i respect that but i a hundred percent agree that the one of ones uh, will in time become like the, you know, the ultimate pieces throughout the NFT space, because that's what art has always been. You know, I know in, you know, when you go back to the ancient world, there were some pieces that had additions to it. Uh, but really, we like to consider like, say, all the great Renaissance pieces, like those are all technically one of ones, you know, and uh, there's none other except the ones that we see in the museums, or that we see uh, in the cathedrals and all the other places. Yeah, for sure. And that's the that's why we are so early on this. I mean, there's so many upcoming artists, artists with the one on one. So that's what makes us really early. Like we said, you said before that we are early and we are indeed like the one on ones will bring much, 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 much things to this space. Like these years will be crazy. Dude, I, I completely agree. That's that's really why I want to document it and uh, get to know you guys as artists, because I think in a weird way, you know how like um, celebrities and movie stars and musicians are like the rock stars of the world and like as everybody's idols to some degree, you know? Yeah. I, know. I, th- I think going forward, we're going to start to see a shift. And I think, you know, uh, the populace is at, at, at large is going to really start to find real authentic artists interesting and they're going to start to follow those kind of artists not the ones that say uh the media companies put in front of our faces but the ones that we discover uh through the internet and through nfts so i think the rock stars of the future are really going to be nft artists for sure i mean we as underground artists uh are having a a way to show our work so i mean there will be so many people from upcoming years that will will break everything. No, definitely. And uh, um, I think we also just fail to realize how like few people are in the space. Like I can't imagine, you know, once we have like a hundred million users or say uh, daily active users in the NFT space, like what does that even look like? You know, uh, yeah, I don't even know how many we have right now. Maybe like, you know, it, it is global and maybe on some days anywhere from a million to 10 million, but maybe even less than that at the, you know, and to be completely honest, we don't really know how many people are using on a day-to-day basis NFTs or looking at NFTs, but it's fascinating to know that over time, you know, just like how the internet now has a billion users or even more than a billion, you know, this space will have just as many and I, I can't even imagine what that's going to look like, but we have a minute and 16 seconds left. So I just want to wrap it up and say thank you, sir, for meeting with me. It, your name's Tiago, correct? Yes, Tiago Pereira. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tiago, for meeting with me. It was a blast to talk with you. I'm sorry it was so kind of short. Uh, but if anything, are there any last words you'd like to say? Any shout outs? Uh, anything you'd like to conclude it with? Uh, I mean, thank you for having me. I mean, it was the first time that I was able to speak with someone in another language. So I think I nailed it. But <laughs> You did nail it. You did an awesome job. Yeah, thanks, bro. I mean, thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me talk about my, my art, about my background. And shout out to all my Brazilian friends that are making art. And 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Of course, man. No, 100%. And yeah, just as you said, shout them out. Uh, because I, I don't know, I feel like there's like a Brazilian wave taking over. It's really cool to see. But yeah, there's so many great artists here, man. Like, I think it's it's the water. I mean, something about the water are making. Something in the water. <laughs> you said it right. 